Okay, we'll open it up now. Are there... Yes. I was, I was saying that I'm going to let Lynn veto this if she uh, feels like it's too personal, but uh, since he spoke a lot about Dorothy strides for independence that are tremendous and, and a feminist before feminism was, was uh, named, uh, but so many times that I saw her sabotage herself, it was for codependence. Can we talk about that, or is that true? Yeah, no, let's, let's talk about that. Dorothy um, was always looking for a father. She formed um, her husband's twice the minor's elder, a rose elder. She, she was not a feminist. In, in any way. She admired men, she preferred the company of men, she hardly made a decision without talking to a man. Uh, I had conversations with her about that and I was a woman. <laughs> um, I think that um, that distorted some of what, what happened. On the other hand, she was living in a man's world and she <laughs> was very ambitious and very strategic, just as she knew how to act like a man in that man's world in a way that many of us did not. And she knew how to write those letters, and she knew how to get those introductions. I don't think she was competitive with other artists. I think she, she was more ambitious than a lot of men. And the power of that ambition helped her to make those connections in ways that a lot of women didn't even know how to do. So it's a respect. Sometimes she would overdo that. Sometimes she would press herself um, um, and, and be denied. I mean, she would ask for too much, demand too much. And that she didn't know the line and not demanding instead of the other way around sometimes. Are there any other questions? Everybody knows everything. Oh, yes, Deborah. <laughs> With the acquisition of the 1,017 works of art that we were also able to pick up so much material that Susie has now familiarized herself with and, and revealed to us. Why do you all think that she not only sent out the inquiry and, and copied that, but also kept records of the responses? Because without that, the rabbit trail would not have been at least as accessible for Susie. And it's pretty remarkable that we have uh, her outgoing mail and the response to that. Um, what did she know? What do you think she knew? And why did she do it that way? That's a, that's a really good question. And um, uh, I think she had absolute belief that it was, you know, this was going to happen. You know, Dorothy always said she was clairvoyant, but, you know, and she also said, uh, there's a quote in the book, it was from a, a, a letter to Linda Borick. Um, it was a, the Boricks were a great supporters of this exhibition project, but also collectors of the work. And it said something, I, I can't really do it word for word, but it was about you know, doors closing, doors opening, and when the door closed, it might, might not have been the right time. And so I think Dorothy, even though it, this didn't happen in her lifetime, she always knew that it, it would. I mean, she, what I could tell, you know, she was a hoarder, but we are the beneficiaries of that hoarding. And thank goodness she did, like I've been saying the last couple of days, this came, if it wasn't for Bill, getting this in this museum, stewarding, all of this information. I mean, it came very close to the dumpster, and we would not have this history. So, um, I, yes, it's very important, very important. It would have just been wiped clean 
And again, that's something to think about in our era of texting and coding and emailing. All of this, the, the kind of information and the books that were, are going to be done in the future are going to be quite different than this very personalized account, you know, I mean, really being able to immerse in someone's lifetime. Dorothy, I think she knew that all of this was important for one day. You know, if you're making all of this art, you're having all of this correspondence, and let me emphasize again, the correspondence that we have, I mean, from a letter from Jose Clemente Orozco, uh, Sophie Treadwell, the New York playwright, Clement Greenberg, Alan Bean, the astronaut, I mean, all of this over, you know, way over half a century of the important figures. You know, she knew at the time, you know, Sir Anthony Caro, for goodness sakes. You know, she, at the time, these people were famous. So, of course, she was going to hold on to that. Yes, Daryl. My question is, what's happening when this closes in January? Where is it going? You know how to ask a question. <laughs> okay, I want to make it. I want to have an opening comment about that. And then, whoever wants to add, they can. We did get the collection. It has taken ten years to get to this room for all of us. It has not always been easy, but it happened. Just like the Ligoretta building happened just like the Johnson Building happened. It happened. We're in art news. This costs, but we're in art news. The museum is in other museums. We're also in a, we're in Texas Monthly. Now, if you read Texas Monthly like I read Texas Monthly, Texas Monthly writes newsy, somewhat controversial story sometimes. I don't care whether it's the Cowboys in West Texas or the Society in North Texas or the Art Museum of South Texas, okay? But what's happening is that the story is getting out. The story is getting out. Now the next thing that's starting to happen is that if there isn't anything that is more intense right now in the background of everybody that's interested in this project. That question is probably the biggest one. And I know that I've been informed that Allison Green is coming down here and the curator from Marco is coming here. I know Susie has some ideas as to how it can happen. I know there's other people that have some ideas as to how this could happen. This exhibit is already starting to generate the kind of dialogue. There's, a, there's an interesting thing. Here is the piece, and I just have to hold it up again. This is the accomplishment. This is the first chapter of art history. Here it is. Fortunately, the right person for this time and place was hired by this museum, thank you, to take four years of her life. Is she a hard worker? She is very hard worker. Is she a, is she a type A personality like I am? I'm, I think I'm a bit more passive than she is, but she is an amazing person because she wrote the history of something that needed to be written. She had... And as time passes, her role in this story is not over. And we talked about that. She said, when I do something like this, I stay with the artist. Now the challenge is, the museum has created this. And it will be up to everybody involved in this, every single person that has a primary role, to take your question, Daryl, and to do with it the very best they can to answer the question, and that is, what happens next? And what, and what happens next has already started to happen. 
And all of you are part of that. You're p the people that are here that have enough interest to be here about this, hear this story and to be, you're actually, you're dealing with art history sitting here right now. As when this museum opened and Philip Johnson came down and talked right here in front in 1972, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's like, art history just keeps happening in this, at the end of 37. And it's like the most amazing story. And I just, I live out in Marin County, California, and I just keep marveling as this is South Texas. This is not San Francisco. And guess what? You do the same kinds of things here. And it's because you have people who believe, every single person here except me, I'm the outsider. I thought it was so interesting tonight that everybody here, except, actually, you're not. You're, you're one of me, my kind. Okay, we're kind of the, you know, we're kind of the crazy people out in California. But she really, you were a Texan. You're a Texan. And, and when I lived here, I was. I adopted this place. I love it, and I still love it, the people here. It is so great. But the answer is that the next step has already happened. The challenge is going to be to figure it out to figure it out. Is it going to be easy? No, no, no. It is not going to be easy. But I guarantee you that the principles, who, the principles care about the art. The principles care about the history. The principles care about how she fits into the story of art. And so I'm, my answer is, I think it's already started, and I can't, I can't give you a clear answer. And anybody on the panel want to try to answer it? <laughs> OK. All right, let me say something. Okay. <laughs> and, and then what I'm going to do right now is, because we're, we're, uh, we're past seven, is I'd like, to, I'd like you to wait on yours okay. to the end. Because I'd like, if you have something that you would like to ha say as a closing statement after hearing this, and hearing what I just said, I'd love for you to do it, and then I'll have you close it, if that's okay. Okay, do you want to start? Sure. Okay. I'll repeat what I said, which is, first of all, it's a, such an honor to be here, um, but this show is amazing, and I'm so pleased that the museum, and thank you, Joe Schenk, as well, and thank you, Deborah. Um, this is incredible getting this, this show here, and I hope you all are very proud to have it in your town and visit it regularly. I'm looking forward to coming back. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for being here and everyone that's participated. And I know Dorothy would want to thank you too. One of the questions that I had that were given to us was, is there anything that you think Dorothy would want viewers to know or want her viewers um, what is it, to see. And what I thought about that was that Dorothy worked <clears throat> leaving aside her ambition and whether it makes it or not. She, she stayed with her integrity in the face of, of loss of sacrifice, not, not being willing to be a formalist was one. But the reason that she couldn't be a formalist was she was working with material that was deep inside of her, inside of her psyche. And what she would want for viewers, and I think what most artists would want for viewers, is that that part of them, that deep soul part of them, connects with you and the deep part of you. I think that's what she'd want you to see. Well, I just wanted to say I'm very impressed. This has been a tremendous undertaking. I know what has been in those boxes. I have students that since 10 years ago have come and helped to catalog and sift through things. So I, I know it was a tremendous undertaking. So the product that we have, not just the exhibition, but the book are fabulous. 
And the main thing I learned tonight that I'd like to recommend is if you're an artist, will you please hoard your things? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things. Um, uh, many, many years ago, um, when I was starting out as a curator and I was doubling as a curator and I was art critic for Art in America, Art News, Art in America, and Art Week, and, and the Houston Post, which was owned by the Hobbies at the time, I was doing double time. And um, a very um, a well-respected curator uh, told me something that I have always remembered um, uh, that I think is very, very important for this, that it's one thing to celebrate and show an artist, a Texas artist in Texas, okay? That's, that's fine, that's wonderful. But what needs to happen is that artist needs to be shown outside of Texas, all right? To get a larger audience, it, to, get, to get that artist on the national radar and, and some kind of critical context. So I think that's very important in, in this respect. There are two choices. Yes, we did a remarkable job on the part of so many people in this museum. Joe Shank, Deborah, Michelle Locke, um, Linda Rodriguez. I mean, you could go through the whole staff and what it takes to put something like this together. You know, that's one thing out there you know, you come to an exhibition or you look at a, a book, like people often tell me, like, oh, well, you're a writer, write something, you know? Or an exhibition just magically goes up. And it takes years of hard work and sacrifice on all fronts. So you have two choices. You can say, well, we did a great job, we got the book, we did our, you know, this is for Dorothy. Or do you become, like I do, a lifetime steward and you keep going with it? Well, we've done this, so what do we, how can we really get it out there? Is this the end or do we get it out in the rest of the country? Do we get it to Europe? Do we get it to Mexico? Do we put, by putting Dorothy on the map, do we also put Texas artists on the map? And can it be a game changer in a larger context. So let's leave with that question, and I think it's a very positive one. Thank you. I'd like to thank each one of you on the panel for your con comments and your insight and your help tonight in helping us to better understand this fantastic exhibition of this very special per person. I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for coming, and especially for the staff, for your generous welcoming back to my old stomping grounds. And it's wonderful to see so many friends here and so, so many new people that I hope I can meet soon. In the, uh, we're going to be outside, and if you'd like to ask us any questions, don't be too hard on us, OK? Because <laughs> but thank you all for coming, and have a, enjoy the exhibition.